you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Today I'd like to talk to you about a mother's love. A mother's love. Proverbs 31. And if you have a bulletin and want to follow along with us, let me give you the outline as we begin. Number one, love in her heart. Love in her heart. Love begins in the heart. Number two, love in her hands. Love in her hands. And number three, love in her home. You know, uh, I've just been so privileged to have Christian parents. Uh, I, like many of you, uh, we went to church. didn't matter if the doors were open, we were there. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, vacation Bible school, any special revival, anything that we had, uh, we went to Cameron Baptist Church. And my father worked a lot. He worked for Southwestern Bell, and he was one of the few PBX repairmen. I think there were only three in the state of Oklahoma, and he had the Western District. And so he would work sometimes 12 to 14-hour days. And to be honest with you, even growing up, we did not see a lot of our father, but I knew he loved me, and he was providing for his family. There were six of us all together. So my mom basically was everything to us children. She did not work when we were in school, okay? She made breakfast for us. She packed our lunches for us. Uh, she was waiting when we got home and we'd get a snack and she would always cook supper. And a lot of times, again, my, my dad wouldn't be there. She would fix him a plate, wrap it with saran wrap and set it on the stove till he got home. And so both basically, you know, my mom was uh, the taxi driver took us to sports, took us to everything. And uh, I can honestly say today, folks, I could not have had a better mom. And I know that's the testimony of many of you out there. There's something about moms that they are just special. They are just special. God made them special. There is no love. Let me say this right off the bat. There is no love like a mother's love. Matter of fact, <laughs> when it comes to getting hurt, I was glad when my dad wasn't around when I got hurt, okay? Because he'd just say, what are you crying for, boy? You know, and he said, I'm going to give you something to cry about. You know, and he had no empathy towards uh, me and when I got hurt. And I did kind of crazy stuff sometimes. Remember when you was a kid, you had those ramps, you'd get wood, you'd get cement blocks and put them up on that. Well, my dad was gone one time, and I thought, I'm going to try this and see how high I can go. Well, folks, that did not turn out real well, all right? I hit front tires, and I did a face plant on the cement and got both of my arms just scraped up. And you know how moms are. Come here, Michael. Let me get a rag and wash it off. Let me help you. And you know, my, my dad says, hey, give me some hot water. Give me the methylate. My mom would put on that cream antibiotic. Man, I love my mom. Man, I love her. And again, I'm not, you know, putting my father down at all. He was trying to raise me to be a man. I understood what he was doing. I didn't understand at that time. But I'm telling you, there is no love like a mother's love. Let's look at Proverbs 31 and see what Solomon Again, one of the smartest, most, you know, king that had wisdom uh, in his life. God gave him a special gift of wisdom. Number t Verse 10, who can find a virtuous wife? And you know, it starts out with a question. And folks, I will say this. Don't get, if you're dating right now, don't get in a hurry. I really believe the engagement period that's in the Bible is one that we should obey also, and that is one year, okay? You have to, you have to get to know that person. You have to know what they think and, and, and what they're going to do, and, and, and your, your hearts need to be entwined together. But a virtuous wife is one of high moral character. That's what virtue means, high moral character. For her worth is far above rubies. Could I put it another way? She is priceless. 
She is priceless. The heart of her, uh, of her husband safely trusts her. And again, folks, love comes from the heart. Jesus comes into our heart. The Bible says that God is love. And as a husband, it is so good to understand that our wives are supportive of us. And the moms take care of us and take care of our children. And we can trust them. Folks, all relationships are based on trust. Even a relationship with Jesus Christ, you have to trust in God. And I thank God for the moms that we uh, can put our confidence in and that we love and we have experienced the love of our moms. So he will have no lack of gain. She shall do him good and not evil all the days of our lives. And folks, when God created woman, he, he said you know, that, that, he, that she was going to be a helpmate. That means... Come along beside us. And I'm telling you, uh, uh, Lori and I have been married for 43 years, and we thank God for our marriage. And yes, there has been some times that there are rough patches. Everybody, uh, matter of fact, I, I heard an evangelist one time say, my, me and my wife, uh, we've been married 52 years, and we have never had an argument. And I looked at him, and in my mind I was think, thinking, Y'all don't talk much, do you? <laughs> okay? You know, and I, you know, I was just a young youth minister. I was 22 years old, and, but I wanted to ask him, but I didn't have the guts to ask him. All right, I'll be honest with you. There are going to be rough patches, but I'm telling you, there is nothing better than to know that your wife is there beside you. Your wife supports you in all that you do. And I'm telling you, they have this love inside of them. They are caregivers, okay? And when roles are switched, we are not near as good a caregiver as the wives, all right? When Lori fell, it was a year ago this week that Lori fell. And I'm kind of ashamed to admit this. I had never changed a sheet on our bed. Never had. Because my mom spoiled me. I stayed at my house till I was 22 years old. All three of my sisters got married at 18 after they graduated from school. And my mom made my bed every day of my life. Isn't that pathetic? That, that's just pathetic. I look back. She, she would make, I'd ask her, Mom, I want my favorite cake. And my favorite cake is yellow cake with chocolate icing. By the way, I went to a place the other day and they were out of it. I was going to sneak a little piece, and God kept me from sneaking that piece. <laughs> but I'm just saying, moms are special. They are always there. They want you happy. They support you. They, they support you in school. They support you in activities. They support you in sports. And moms are special. And it says, verse 13, she seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. I learned to run a vacuum cleaner, okay? I learned to clean a toilet. I'd never cleaned a toilet in my life. And I, I thank God for moms, okay? Because it, I'm just telling you, they are special. Verse 14, she's like the merchant ship. And what is he talking about? You know, in those days, and you have to understand, our culture today is nothing like the culture during biblical times here. When merchant ships came in, that was a very special time. It was extremely special because these, these things would come from long ways off, even from other countries. And you could wait one or two years for a certain ship to come in. And moms were, were there, and, and moms, uh, they would buy those special gifts on our birthdays and those special gifts at Christmas time. She brings food from afar. One of the things, and I remember this, folks, she, uh, uh, is, she was full-blooded, uh, uh, you know, Mexican, and she made the best flour tortillas. And she had turned those flour tortillas uh, into beef enchiladas, 
And I'm telling you, I thought I died and went to heaven. They were so good. Moms cook. Moms clean. Moms look after us. And we thank God for that because they have that special love in their heart. She also rises while it is yet night. And my grandmother, Josie, every Christmas, and here's what I loved about my family. We had the Franklin Christmas where we had turkey and dressing and ham and all that. But the Lopez Christmas, we had tamales and flour tortillas. And my grandma would get up every morning. I spent summers with them, two and three weeks at a time. And Josie would get up. I'd look at the clock. It'd be 5.30 when she got up, and she'd start the stove. And she'd start making those flour tortillas. We always had refried beans and flour tortillas at every meal. And you could smell the bacon also cooking. So she rises up while it was yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maid servants. What does it mean? She not only mothered her family. You know what I found about moms? Moms are mom. And my house was a hangout house. And do you know why? Because in our neighborhood, I had the only basketball goal and the only basketball. <laughs> so kids from the neighborhood would come to my house. And my mom always made them a part of the ha household. Listen, moms have a special love in their heart. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians 13. It's called the love chapter. It says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Simply means I'm just making noise. Okay, if I do things without love, I'm just making noise. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith that, that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. The Bible says love covers sin. Folks, you think of God's love. God's love, He loves us so much. He doesn't want us to sin. But just as the prodigal son thought he knew better, I am telling you, God welcomes His children Home. Now, these are characteristics, I believe, of God's love, and I want to compare them with a mother's love. Love suffers long, which is patient and is kind. A mother's love is. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own and is not provoked, and thinks no evil. Folks, I am telling you, moms put their families and their husbands ahead of themselves. I noticed in both of my grandparents' life when we ate, both of my grandmas cooked meals. And my grandma Franklin, I'm telling you, she made the best fried chicken you can put your lips on. Okay? And I found out her secret later on, ladies. She soaked it in buttermilk. I'm just giving you out her secret. So, so try that. And then call me, and I'll test it out and see if it's okay, all right? And moms are like that, folks. That tradition was she ate last. She wanted to make sure everyone was taken care of. And we thank God for that. Does not behave rudely does not seek its own, is not provoked, and thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but love rejoices in truth. And here's where I see the mother's love especially. Love bears all things. Oh, I'm telling you folks, if it wasn't for my mom, I wouldn't be standing here today. Because my dad would get so mad at me at some of the things. And he had this little phrase, he said, every time... I did something stupid. He said, boy, what were you thinking? And I literally have seen my mom come and stand in front of me. Okay? Moms are that way, folks. Moms are that way. And, and don't, you know, I understand. I'm not saying my dad was abusive, but I'm telling you this. There's a difference between a spanking and a whooping. Okay? 
Right now we have timeouts, okay? There's not a timeout chair in my house, okay? A, a spanking is mom will get the belt, and what was so funny about mom's discipline, she'd get me by one hand, she'd get that belt, and she'd start swinging, and I would start running. And we'd go, we'd be going like this. She'd be spanking me. And she was trying to catch me like that. And my dad, bend over the bed. If you move one inch, I'll give you three more wax. Okay. Again, I knew my father loved me, folks. I'm not trying to give him in a bad light. It's just the way it was when I was a kid. But there's something special about a mother's love. It bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. Love never fails. Oh, folks, if there was one thing my mother taught me, and she taught me what true love was. Number two, not only love in her heart, but also love in her hands. Look at Proverbs 31. Verse 16, she considered it as a field and buys it. In her profit, she plants a vineyard. And again, the moms that stayed at home and dads that have to go work, even in these days, the moms would make a garden. They would have chickens, they would have animals, and, and they, would, they would sell their products. So they helped even on the income, even while they were sitting and, and working from home. She girds herself with strength. And strength is in her arm. And again, I don't think it's talking about just physical strength. There was strength in her character. There was strength in her word. There was this, this you know, special thing about, that a mother had. I know Sarah Jane in our life, when she was very young, she hated storms. She hated them. And I hated when they came in the middle of the night. Because we knew we would hear those tap, those feet tapping, and here she comes. And do you think she jumped in my arms? <laughs> no, she just woke me up. She jumped in Lori's arms, and I'm telling you, she would crate her, and, and Lori would sing songs to her till she went back to sleep. Folks, there's strength in mother's arms. She perceived that her merchandise was good. Her lamp does not go out by night. I'm, I'm wondering how many new fathers hear that baby in the nursery crying and says, hey, you stay here. I'll take care of this. <laughs> not very many. Let me help you with that survey. All right? Matter of fact, I, I taught our kids early. Mama, 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 mama. Mama, all right, moms have that kind of love. And truthfully, they, would, they will beat you to that crib. Okay, that's the kind of love moms have. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hands hold to the spindle. And folks, you had to make things. There weren't department stores. There were marketplaces. But I even remember my mom, she would get those patterns and she'd lay those patterns out on the bed and the material, and she'd make my sisters three dresses, and she'd dress them all the very same dress. And as my sisters got older, they said, would you quit making us dress? It's embarrassing, all right? But mom took care of that. Her hands hold the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor, and she reaches out her hands to the needy. She was willing to share, and she helped Every, everybody in the neighborhood. If she could solve a neighborhood problem, she would. And you know what that is, folks? That's ministry. That is ministry. She was not afraid of her snow for her household, for her household is clothed with scarlet. That means she prepared for winter. She knew what was coming. She made tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. And folks, you had church clothes and you had other clothes. And when you went to church, you wore your church clothes. I had my tennis shoes on one Sunday morning. <laughs> I liked them. They were new black converts. And I thought, these are brand new. I'm wearing them to church. 
I walk in there and mom looks at me, go get your dress shoes on. And so I went in, I, 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 and I, I did this a lot. So I went into dad and I thought, I wonder what he's going to say. He looks up, go get your dress shoes off. <laughs> Same thing, all right? They provided things for us. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. That's the leadership of the husband. And a lot of times, like I said, my father was gone and my mother had to fulfill every role in our home. She makes linen garments of silk and sells them and supplies and sashes for merchants. And folks, all these things that you see is mom working with her hand. When she was young, she, would, she was taken, she was the oldest of nine children. And, they, and, and my grandparents came up from Mexico and they would work fields. And, and she was the oldest one and, and she would work at a young age. They started working the fields. Then as her, she had her siblings. She became a, a, a mother to her siblings. The only uh, uh, relative I have left is my Aunt Juanita in Oklahoma City. And folks, I'm telling you, when my mom was about to die, she told me this. She said, you take care of your Aunt Juanita because I took care of her for years. And every time I go to Lawton, I stop by and I see my Aunt Juanita. Folks, moms are precious to us. They show us the examples of what a virtuous woman is. We can learn from godly moms. There's love in her heart. There's love in her hands. And the last thing, and to me this is the most important, love in her home. Look at verse 25. Strength and honor are her clothing. Folks, we are talking about character. Character. And if you see, I'm serious, I've got a picture in my uh, study over here of my mom when she was 18 years old. I'm telling you, she was slim. She was one good-looking girl. Uh, Binger, Oklahoma is where she was raised. And I'm telling you, uh, uh, she was a good student, an honor student. She shall rejoice in time to come. Strength and honor are her clothing. She opens her mouth with wisdom. And folks, again, many times I got the wisdom from my mom because mom was always there. Mom was always there. And on her tongue is the law of kindness. I'm just telling you, there's, you know, sometimes uh, I, was, I was told when I was a baby I had colic, and so I would just cry all the time. And the only thing that would stop me crying is to be in my mother's arms and her singing to me. Some of you see that as you were just spoiled. Well, I'll take it, all right? I'll take it. Because my mom was always there. She watches over the ways of her household. It does not eat the bread of idleness. You know what I found out about a mom? Her work is never done. Her work is never done. And I thank God for the ladies that go and they work an eight or nine hour job. And you think about it, they come home. You know, uh, a lot of times they, they prepare a meal and you know, they do most of the cleaning and all that's going on. And honestly, men, we need to honor our wives more than one day a year for what they do. They are the glue many times that holds our homes together. In verse 28, and her children rise up and call her blessed. Oh, folks, I'm just telling you, I miss my mom so much. If I could just have one more conversation with her. And when it says, arise up and call her blessed, we, as men and women, men, excuse me, we need to honor and respect our wives. Her husband also, he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. I don't know, mom has... Just that special love in the home. Mom was a homemaker. She worked and, you know, I loved it when she made biscuits and gravy. I loved it. Every Saturday morning we had cinnamon rolls. You know those biscuits you buy and you, 
I call them wobbles. You can just wop them on a the counter and you, you open up the deal. She'd put holes in them things and put cinnamon all over it. That was a special thing. It was home. Okay, home is where the heart is. And that was because of our mom. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. And again, the, the Proverbs is saying, you know, charm it is, is again trying to get what you want talking your way into things, okay? Uh, charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing. And all I have to do is look in the mirror to know that beauty is passing, all right? As we get older, all right, it, we, we aren't what we used to be. And here's the key, ladies. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. What does it mean to fear the Lord? It's respecting the Lord. It's honoring the Lord. Even when my father was away, folks, he was away working. It was mom that loaded us up and took us to church. Mom always worked in Sunday school or vacation Bible school. Mom was the one when we were young that read the Word of God to us at night. Mom was the one that did many of those things in my spiritual life. But a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised and give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. I truly think many moms are not going to know till they get to heaven the lives that they have touched. The lives that they have touched. Matter of fact, when I think of my mom, and I know you think this too of your mom, the words of Jesus Christ, well done, my good and faithful servant. That is what moms truly are. Proverbs 22, Proverbs 22, 6. And I want to encourage all of our moms today. Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And moms, I'm telling you, I know you've done your best to raise children. And even sometimes as adult children, they just break our hearts. They really do. But I am telling you, what you taught them will come back. They will come back. It's not your fault of the choices they make. And all you can do is stay on your knees and keep praying for your children. That prayer is such a, an important, important thing. thing. I want to thank God for His love and the love that He has put in mom's hearts, in their hands, and into our homes. But as we close, I want to also tell you about somebody else's love. Even as strong as mom's love is, there is one other person, one other person, God Himself, Jesus Christ, whose love is stronger. And that love is love, and that love is eternal love. And God loved you so much that He sent His own Son to live a perfect life, to die on a cross for your sins and to ra be raised the third day. And now He's in heaven at the right hand of God. And if you have not experienced God's love, if you are not sure that if you were to die today, you would go to heaven, you can experience God's love today. And we can help you with this, with that. We're just going to have a time of invitation in just a few minutes. And if you'll just come down and say, I need to experience God's love in my own life. I need to know when I pass from this life that I will be with God in heaven. And the Bible is very clear about what you need to do. You need to uh, uh, confess your sins. You need to ask for forgiveness of your sins. You need to acknowledge Jesus Christ and God as Lord and Savior. And you need to invite Him into your heart. 
And what a day it would be if you were saved today on Mother's Day. I'm telling you, you would make a lot of moms very, very happy. And then also, rededication of life. We as sons and children sometimes, we do not you know, act like we should act all the time. And if God has spoken to you today and you need to rededicate your life to Christ, I pray that you would take the time either to come here and kneel at the altar or talk to one of us. Maybe you need to follow the Lord in baptism. You have not been scripturally baptized or even joined the church. Folks, we're not in that big a hurry to get out of here today. We would love to talk to you about any decision that you make. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you for a mother's love. God, I thank you for our moms, those who have passed on and those who are here today. God, I pray a special blessing upon them. And God, I pray that if there's one here today that doesn't know you, God, I pray that they would come forward and make a public profession of faith and invite you into their life. And God, just others, if there's other decisions that need to be made, God, I pray that they would do that today. God, I pray that your spirit would be working strong. And God, I pray that we would just obey the Holy Spirit. So again, we thank you for our mother's love. And we thank you for salvation. God, I pray that we know, that we know, that we know, we know Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. God, this is your church. This is your time. This is your invitation. God, I pray that you do with it what you choose. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?